What's up guys, Kevin with On Point Pro Styles in Gainesville, Georgia, uh, back with another video. This time uh, I'm going to show you how we're gonna set up our blade holder with our 25 degree blade. This will also work with a 30 degree blade uh, so we can get our plotters cut. And I'm gonna be working on the Workhorse 2 plotter, but the same applies for setting up the blade for the, work, the Workhorse plotter as well as the Eco Cut plotter. So we're gonna take a blade holder with nothing in it, fresh, like brand new, 25 degree blade, Combine them, we're gonna go from here to here so we can get our plotters cutting our patterns out for some vehicles. Let's get to it. So I'm gonna to try to keep this short, sweet, and as simple as possible. A couple things you're gonna to wanna to first make sure of. Number one, make sure your cutting strip is good. If you've already tried to do this and you've gouged into your cutting strip, get some masking tape, some Teflon tape, even Gorilla tape, and put over top of it to give you a fresh cutting surface. Another thing is these machines come with a plastic tape on top of the cutting strip. And when you remove that tape, I've noticed that it leaves a lot of glue residue adhesive on the machine. If you don't notice that or you don't see that, you go to put your film into the machine, the film will stick to it and it will bunch up and ruin a cut batch. So be sure to check for that. Cover it with tape as necessary. Don't put so much tape on here that it's too soft. You just wanna cover it. I use Teflon on mine, food for thought. Next thing you're, you're gonna wanna consider is which machine do you have? This is the Workhorse 2. There's the Workhorse and the Eco Cut. The Workhorse 2 and the Workhorse Plotter both like to play in the range of about 45 to 65 roughly. So I always try to start my blade procedure setup around the 45 degree mark and try to end around 50 or a little over 50. Your EcoCut Plotter is gonna work on a lot higher gram force. So you should know that that one's probably gonna be between the 150 and 200 mark. So uh, my suggestion would be is get around the 180, the 175 mark and start your setup there. So first off, get rid of the pattern we cut. Next, I'm gonna get rid of the already set up blade I have so we can start fresh and go through this. Set that aside. So first thing I wanna do, my menu, your main screen is gonna be your speed and your force on all the machines. Uh, my speed on this machine, because it's already set up and I'm comfortable with it, I have it set up to 400. I would highly suggest you go about 280 or so. If you're setting up, it runs a little bit slower, giving you more time to catch it if something goes wrong. So definitely use a lower, a lower speed. Uh, like I said, 45 to 65, I'd rather use less force than I have to. So I'm gonna start my machine at 45. So I've set my 45, I hit the enter button, as you can see. So next thing we wanna do, we've got a lock ring, which is the gold ring here. You might have a black blade holder, you might have a silver blade holder. It doesn't matter, they're all gonna work the same. So we're gonna break this bottom ring loose and we're gonna spin it all the way up to this top portion. The top portion is what dials our blade in and out. We're gonna use a blade, and in this case, it's the 25 degree, which is recommended for tint. We're gonna drop this bad boy into the blade holder. Now the next thing I'm looking for is there's quite a bit of blade sticking out right now. I mean, I can feel it. I could scratch myself really badly if I, if I tried to. So I wanna dial this counterclockwise, keeping that ring close to here, not toward the, the bottom of the, the body like this. We want it to the top. So I'm gonna dial that blade back in to where I can barely, barely see it out. Like not almost not out at all. And I'm gonna slowly clockwise dial it until I barely feel the tip of the blade. Barely scratch my skin. That feels right, right there. It's, if I just touch my skin with it, I can feel it kind of scrape across my, my finger. So now that I've got it there, I'm leaving it loose. We're gonna drop this into the carriage, make sure it goes all the way down and we're gonna tighten it up. Another thing to keep in mind is don't over torque this. It's plastic and break it. So just snug it up. I'm gonna hit my enter button. I have a habit of doing that multiple times, get into that habit. Uh, it'll only take once of you forgetting to hit enter and you go to hit the cut button. It can cause problems. Now on my machine, I have a test. First, let me identify, I do not have the film set in the proper rollers. I'm only doing a blade setup, so I'm not concerned with the roller being to the far right and the far left. So don't judge me on that. 
It's just here to push the film in and out so I can dial my blade holder in. I don't expect to spend a lot of film on this as you'll hopefully see. So let's get it set up a little closer to in front of this roller so we can utilize as much material as we can. So we're gonna hit the on offline button. We're gonna use our force left and right, right in front of the roller, dial back a little bit of film. I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times. My blade dropped and came back up. I know I'm set. There's a test button. I'm gonna hit this test button. It's gonna cut a one inch square with a triangle in the middle. That's what we're gonna use to help dial our blade in. So test. On off button, draw it out. I'm gonna look at the film. It's a little bit more than scratched, but definitely not cut through. Not a problem. On off again, we're gonna roll past that. Hit our enter button. Now, I'm gonna take it out for the purposes of showing you how much I turn this, but leave it in the machine to do this. This is why we left this loose. It scratched the film. I don't wanna mess with the force until I get it cutting almost where I need it. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it about that much. Very little, maybe an eighth of a turn. I'm gonna drop it back in, and now from here on, I'm gonna leave it in. So leave, your, leave the blade holder in the carriage while you do this. Just take little turns at a time. I'm all set up. I hit the enter just to be sure. Test button. It's done. Draw some film out. Looking good. So it's clearly cutting a little deeper, but it's not enough for me to peel away. Another thing I wanna discuss real quick before we go any further. With every cut you make on a plotter, it doesn't matter if it's tint, if it's vinyl, anything. There's a start point and a stop point. And what that means is when, when it, say it draws this, this square, it starts, draws the walls, come back down and ends. And you hope that it ends microscopically perfect. Well, that's usually not the case. So you have, you have sort of a breaking point as you tear away. So you have to break past that and deal with the rest of it. How does it peel? So keep that in mind. Anywho, that was not enough. So we've got two squares. I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna move past the last square, hit enter, and I'm gonna dial it the same, about an eighth clockwise. Now I'm gonna hit test again. On off, draw some film. Another thing I'm doing is I'm taking my finger right where the square is and I'm pushing kind of up and rubbing the film like this because if you go too far and it wants to cut through the film, if you get really, really close, you may think you didn't, but if you put just a little pressure on it and it pops that square out, you're too far. So still not enough. It's only three tests. I'm gonna dial it another eighth test. And we're just gonna keep doing this. Might get boring. I'm able to start tearing the film, but obviously not clean. I'm trying to tear the film and in a perfect world, in vinyl world, you'd wanna leave that triangle, but tint is so thin and the backing, remember with vinyl, you have a much thicker backing. So this has to be very, very, very precise. The tint is in most cases thicker than the actual liner. So you have a very, very fine, fine line of not enough and too much. So don't get overwhelmed with it. It can take a while to get this in. But this is the fastest, easiest way I found. So anyway, cutting a little, didn't cut much, still cut about halfway through the film because it tore the plies away. We're close. Reset. I can't go past my roller. I'm going to dial my blade out just a little bit more. Hit enter, test. That triangle pulled out very, very nice. Not extremely clean, but very nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave the blade where it's dialed, move past, hit enter, and I'm gonna take my gram force from 45 and I'm gonna go up one to 48. Well, one notch takes it up three grams. So I went up one notch, which took it up three grams. I'm at 48, enter, test cut. That was even better and the square. I'm going to push the envelope and it's at 48, bump it once. Now it's at 51, enter, test. Remember, I don't want to cut through, but I want it to peel as great as I can make it peel. Brilliant. 
Remember, there's a start and stop point even on the triangle, so it pulls. On the triangle, it's on the left wall, and on the square, it's on the bottom. So when you peel, you're concerning yourself with, on the square, the right, the top, and the left, the bottom, you have to break that tiny little piece. The triangle, you have to break that tiny little piece on the left wall, but the rest should peel very clean. That, I'm happy. Now I'm gonna set up, we're gonna do a test cut. Okay guys, so moment of truth. Um, back at my computer, I'm going to pull up my software, which in my case is Film Cut. We'll go over the software in more videos later. However, uh, I'm just gonna use this right now. So I pulled up a 2020 Toyota Camry. I'm going to cut the rear quarter window on it, so it's not tiny, it's not too big. We don't need to cut full doors and back windows to make sure this thing works. We wanna utilize the least amount of film as we can. So I have that quarter window. I've got my plotter set up. I'm going to hit cut and let's see what it does. Now from the look of it, looks like I have a pattern. The real test, so we gotta peel it. Now remember, start and stop points. You have to break past those. And you can see, almost, almost, a little bit of a struggle. So I'm going to actually bump it from 51 up one notch to 54, hit enter, we're gonna do another cut. I'm ready to go to work. The last thing we want to do is loosen this up, take out that blade, be careful not to turn this part because we've got it set, we're ready to go. Blades out where it needs to be, we're going to turn the lock nut to the bottom and we're going to tighten it. Be sure not to turn this, just tighten the lock ring. And then that baby's set. I'll show you what I do with mine. When I set up a blade holder, I tape it. The reason why I tape it is because once it's set, it's set. Stay with the same brand, same type of blades, and you'll never have to change it. You might have to adjust it way, way, way later. Maybe some dirt or dust got stuck inside there. Keep it clean. You might have to adjust it again. But otherwise, when I change my blade, Here's another 25, here's a 45 I use for uh, vinyl. I have a 60 set up for PPF. So when you go to change the blade, the button on the back of the blade holder, you push that in, pops the blade out, you pull the old blade out, keep it clean, take your new blade, stick it in, and you're ready to cut. Simple as that. So guys, I hope that helped make one of the most tedious, most difficult parts of setting up your plotter a little bit easier and a little bit better to understand or a little easier to understand anyways going from just a regular brand new blade holder to something that actually works cuts and the precision doesn't stop here you're going to dial on this little bits at a time you're going to change your force little tiny bits at a time until your tears are just as perfect as you can make them remember your start and stop points there's not a whole lot you can do about that you have to remember to break past those other than that you should be able to peel fairly clean almost all the time if it's not, it could be your blade dolling, could be your cut strip. So I'm gonna have another video that I'm gonna try to, you know, help troubleshoot these things. But hey, if you're just getting started and you're just setting up your first blade holder, this is where you need to be. You don't have to waste a bunch of film to do it. I help a lot of people set these things up and I've heard a lot of horror stories of people going through just tons and tons and tons of film. You don't have to. Utilize that test button, get it close, pick you a nice 12 inch pattern from a vehicle, cut it. If it cuts that 12 inch, 13 inch pattern like a quarter window, most likely it's going to cut a door window. And like I said, if you find that you want to put a little extra gram on it, add another notch, another three grams. But you're going to tweak on it here and there. I'm still tweaking on mine. This is the best route I found to set this up. Listen, reach out to plotterdepot.com. They're where to help or they're there to help. Um, this is the number one thing that, that can be very difficult. Take a breath. First one I set up took me probably an hour or two. Uh, so it was a lot of learning, but I've learned a lot since then. And this is the best way that I know 
to set the new blade holder out. Reach out to PlotterDepot.com, check out their, uh, their plotters, their software. I use FilmCut, they also have FilmCut Pro. Again, the plotters, the Workhorse 2, the Workhorse, and the EcoCut. You can set them up all the same way. If you need help, reach out to me. I'm there to help. Kevin, On Point Pro Styles, Gainesville, Georgia. See you on the next one.